So yeah, uh, hi everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about Rolex, a scalable RDMA-oriented learned key value store for disaggregated memory systems. I don't have the slides for this presentation since you know we don't have the, the volunteer speaker and um, I didn't really have time to uh, prepare the slides. Um, that being said, um, you know this is the best paper from FAST23. Right, and it packs like a lot of content, right? So obviously we're talking about um, you know RDMA. Um, we're talking about learned uh, indexes and disaggregated uh, memory, right? So um, you know quite a lot of topics uh, like packed into one paper. Um, we actually uh, had a talk on disaggregated memory systems, uh, disaggregated uh, storage last time. So you know this kind of continues um, continues the topic. So uh, here we go. So um, you know why do we need uh, a scalable RDMA oriented learned key value store for disaggregated systems? According to the to the authors, right? Um, the, the key value stores are obviously very popular, very important uh, concept. Um, disaggregated memory, we already discussed this before, allows us to separate the compute uh, and memory, right? So we can scale uh, either the compute side or the memory side um, kind of independently. Um, and when we talk about memory here, we really talk about like in-memory uh, storage, right? So, um, you know, this would be like a, a in-memory key value store with this uh, disaggregated memory pool. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, and what does it mean to have learned key value store, like learned a part of this, right? So the the, the learned uh, has to do with how the stuff is being indexed, right? So the traditional uh, key value stores, um, traditional like storage systems, uh, we index them with some kind of tree structure. Let's say you know B tree, right? Or we use like LSM tree uh, in in a lot of like on disk storage and whatnot. So um, you know, but yeah, if we focus on this in-memory stores, right? So some variant of B3 is, um, you know, is the style that we're going to use. And that doesn't really work well when we uh, try to put it in a disaggregated memory system. Um, and that's because, uh, that's because we have, um, you know, memory pool. Um, let's see if I can... Uh, maybe try to draw on the margin. Um, you know, we have um, compute and we have memory, right? And, you know, they are separated by the network. So if we have uh, the, the index, some kind of, you know, tree structure sitting in memory, um, if we want to look up, stuff, right, from the compute node, right? So the, the clients will interact with the compute nodes and say, hey, you know, give me some value, give me the key and whatnot. So if we have this index stored in memory, that means we'll have to probably, uh, you know, do like multiple of this uh, network uh, trips to retrieve, to traverse the tree, right? So, so that's the problem. And um, the solution to this problem, again, according to the paper, the typical solution would be uh, to heavily rely on caches, right? So, um, you know, we, we would like to like cache those trees as much as possible. But even if we cache them, the, the, those trees, those indexes, they, they tend to be very large, right? So we cannot cache all of the tree on the compute nodes, right? Plus, you know, if we do that, like how do we ensure that um, all the compute nodes have the, the consistent copy of, of, of that, you know, cache tree, right? So, so there is like a, a whole lot of problems uh, that's involved with um, using the trees. Um, and, you know, ideally we want to have some kind of indexing structure that allows us to do, uh, allow us to cache and just look up the data uh, from those memory nodes in kind of one round trip. Um, and this is where uh, the learned index come, uh, come, come in, right? So this um, learned um, indexes, um, they, uh, um, they uh, like, don't take a lot of memory, 
right? So if you have a static workload, if you don't have a lot of changes in your data set, um, you can create, you can learn that index, then you can cache it on compute nodes, and then you can use that, you know, cached index, which is decently small because it's low, and it's just like a, a, a set of, you know, essentially equations, set of formulas. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, you can, you know, retrieve stuff directly from the compute. Um, and, you know, this is not new stuff, right? So, so there, there are systems that do that. Um, the problem with that approach, of course, it works well when the workload is static, when we don't have any changes in, you know, in the data set, right? So um, there are no writes, essentially, no updates. Um, and the authors talk about this um, XStore uh, system, uh, which tries to take um, you know, learned index and combine it with B3, right? So they have kind of both, um, and uh, the, the B3 allows kind of for more dynamic uh, uh, nature. So if, if there are, you know, if, if there is a dynamic workload, then you can kind of fall back to the B3 and whatnot. And, um, you know, they took this approach and they um, applied it to disaggregated memory, and they say it still doesn't work, right? Because, uh, like, it actually requires a lot of uh, compute power to be on those memory nodes. And, you know, by definition, we try to disaggregate the compute from, from memory, right? So those memory servers, they don't really have a lot of compute. So from this exercise, they have, you know, identified this, uh, like three problems, right? So limited uh, compute on memory nodes, um, overloaded bandwidth when data transfer. So that refers to um, like having to move a lot of data between the memory and the compute nodes, especially when you need to retrain the index, right? If you have this dynamic model, um, you know, at some point you'll need to retrain the index and whatnot. Um, and uh, inconsistencies, right? So if you have multiple compute nodes, multiple, you know, essentially writers trying to, you know, make changes to the same stuff, um, how, how, how do you allow that? Right, so um, that, that's uh, the, the, the third challenge. And they claim, you know, they, they, they designed this new system called Rolex to, um, you know, solve these three challenges, essentially. Um, so, I guess what's, um, Let's uh, let's probably talk about. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah, about uh, the the learned index, in a, because this is kind of the, the 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 key the key thing here, right? So um, if we can have the the learned in, the learned index cached at the compute nodes, um, you know that removes that need to traverse the trees, right? So the problem, of course, is the dynamic. Uh, workloads, right? When do we do when, when we need to do writes? Typically, if you have like a you know traditional tree index structure, you would need to update the index, right? So you update the index and then you you know up, up update the data or insert the data um, and two uh, you know stay consistent with each other, right? So the data and the index they they, they correlate to each other, they're consistent. Um, that's not very possible if you have a cache of this model uh, on compute nodes and you have multiple compute nodes, right? So somehow you need to come up with um, an index that is not only good for the data that you have right now, but is also okay for some number of updates going into the future, right? So that you don't have to continue to rebuild the index all the time uh, when the updates come. And um, the index that they use is, um, is something called uh, piecewise uh, linear regression, right? PLR, uh, which is uh, you know just a whole bunch of you know linear regressions. Essentially, like you, you, your index is is a function that's defined as many uh, small uh, lines, right? Um, and um, the idea here, uh, let me zoom into that image. Um, so each of the PLRs, uh, like right here, corresponds to, 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 to this stuff, um, encodes a, a portion of the key space, right? And, and uh, you know, essentially creates the model, the, the linear regression model, 
for some tiny portion of the key space. And um, you know, th this kind of model can be viewed as this uh, blue rectangle, right? Um, well, um, yeah, not that really rectangle, but this blue area, right? So if you're uh, looking for stuff and you know, you, you can describe it by this um, f of x line and, and some like parameters of um, like the, 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 the error that, that's allowed. And, and that will describe that um, blue shape. So um, the problem with this index, which is not new, that's that's something that um, apparently has been you know, used in literature, is that it doesn't really allow for insertions that well, right? So without retraining, without recomputing that stuff, um, and that's because um, again, without like going into uh, details on how the actual index uh, learned index works. Um, but, um, you know, it, it will give you an answer, like, if I have key um, x, um, you know, what's the rough uh, memory region this key x is going to reside? And then you can go to this memory region, you know, scan through it and, and retrieve, you know, the, the, the key x, right? So um, if we can maybe, um, you know, for a second pretend that, you know, this is our memory region, maybe we have... Um, uh, so let, let's make it smaller. Uh, so, so maybe this is the, the memory region. We have maybe key eight, you know, key nine, um, I don't know, key 15, right? And, you know, maybe nothing here. Um, if I try to look up key 15, you know, um, I have this learned index that will point to this memory region, this, this box. Now, if I start adding stuff, if I start inserting stuff, let's say I insert key 10, um, well, now I need to put key 10 here and key 15 here, right? So now, um, you know, I kind of push it away, but it still may be like fit, it still may fit in that original like region that's pointed by that index. So if I still look, look up key 15 in that Laurent index, it still points to this region. I uh, just, you know, now it's slightly like in a different place, but but it, it's okay. It's still in the same kind of general area that, that index the index points to. But if I can uh, continue adding stuff, you know, 11, 12, and all of a sudden my 15, you know, you know, may um, end up in, uh, in, in, in here, which is kind of outside of this index space, right? So the index now still points, hey, if you have 15, go look here. But now I pushed 15 outside of that memory space where the index tells me to look for it. Um, and, and the solution is to retrain the index. That, that's what kind of the existing systems uh, do. So when you do the inserts, you need to retrain the index. So what they propose is um, uh, kind of a few uh, different things to mitigate this, right? So one uh, mitigation strategy is to uh, kind of add this wiggle room right here, right? So um, essentially they, they you know, over-index a little bit, right? They, they say, yeah, you know, this is, you know, what it needs to be, but we add like a, a additional margin. Now, this additional margin, you know, doesn't solve all the problems because if I can keep inserting, you know, I can push my, you know, 15 right here, like outside of that additional margin. So it doesn't really solve the problem that much. It just, you know, allows you to have a little bit more of a wiggle room. So the second um, kind of <laughs> thing that they did is um, they um, divide their um, memory space into fixed um, uh, chunks. Uh, fixed arrays. They call them uh, leaf nodes. Um, and um, essentially this index now, um, instead of, yeah, th this index, it, it, it tells, hey, you know, for this particular key, go look at that particular leaf node. And they say that you cannot move an item outside of a leaf node. So if you placed an item, you know, some key um, in a leaf node, it cannot be moved outside of it without re-indexing it, right? Um, so that kind of puts the constraint, obviously, on how much stuff you can insert, right? So, um, you know, I would not be able to spill out this 15 outside of, you know, this original, like, leaf node. Um, and, you know, maybe the system would completely, like, shut down. 
So to prevent this, to, to still allow writes when you need to spill over, um, they um, create a kind of a, a spill spillover region. So uh, and, and that spillover region they call uh, sy uh, synonym leaf table, synonym leaf nodes. So so essentially now if you need to spill over, um, they um, uh, let's see. So if you need to spill over, uh, uh, if you need to spill over, um, you know, you, you, you're like all full here. Um, that was 15, let's say, right? Um, you know, th this like leaf note is, is, is full, um, but we want to insert 11. Right. So, so if if that's the case, then um, you know you'll have this a spill over uh, leaf node um, that uh, will be kind of attached here to to some metadata that's associated with with, with this leaf node, um, and we can place eleven here. Um, and like logically, um, those two things they kind of occupy the same like logical memory space. You, you, you can think of it kind of this way. So this uh, um, spillover, this like synonym leaf nodes, they are um, like, you cannot continue doing them forever. Um, I don't think you can do um, a synonym, synonym leaf node, like this spillover region for a spillover region. Um, and they also have a fixed number of this uh, spillover regions uh, because of how um, like things are actually indexed. So at some point you will be forced to re-index things anyway. Um, but what it gives them uh, is the is the time to re-index, right? So they say instead of like re-indexing on every um, write on every update, um, you know we have time to continue ingesting the data while actually re-indexing in the background. Um, and like yeah, there is a lot of like other complexity on how to make sure you can re-index in the background while still continue um, doing the, the updates. And, and the paper goes into more details here. And um, there are more details on, um, uh, on like how do we update those structures atomically so that multiple compute nodes can interact with the index and actually update um, at the same time. Um, the short story for this is locks. Each leaf node um, uh, has a lock associated with that. So if one compute node needs to update, it will actually acquire the lock uh, atomically. Um, and you know, it will be the exclusive writer for, for that particular uh, you know, update. Uh, right at that particular time, so so essentially that kind of sequentializes the the concurrent updates from different um, uh, uh, different compute node, um, and yeah, so this is the the indexing structure. Um, so this PLR models, as, as I mentioned, that's just like a bunch of different linear regressions, right? So a bunch of different like line equations, and the upper models um, is kind of the index on top of those indexes. And an actual like PLR model index, it has the, the key, which is the smallest key um, that this um, uh, particular PLR model represents. And then it has the entries for um, the LT is uh, learned. Um, it's, um, uh, what is it? <sighs> is the leaf node table, right? So LT is leaf node table. Uh, and it points to the leaf nodes, and SLT is the synonym leaf node table, uh, which points to, uh, you know, which has information about the, the SLTs. And um, yeah, so this is some like, if there is a, if there is a need to spill over, then the leaf node table entry will, you know, obviously it will point to the leaf node, but it will also say, hey, um, you know, I have this spillover region in SLT um, and has the pointer to that SLT region so that you can go find that pointer and then find that um, SLT uh, synonym, synonym leaf node. Yeah, here we go. So 
Yeah, that, that, that's kind of the, the idea, right? So to build the index that can be cached, that can allow some number of updates to arrive to the system without the need to re-index, right? Um, you, you know, will like move around the data, you will, you know, create those spillover regions, which may slow down your lookup a little bit, right? But you don't need to re-index. So the, 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 the model can be cached for longer durations at the compute nodes, um, and uh, the model can be um, recreated in the background, which actually happens on the memory nodes. They say it's it's very cheap to recreate the, the model and it's like big O of N complexity. Um, so it can happen on those CPU starving memory nodes, apparently. And then the memory nodes can just uh, distribute the, the updated model to the compute nodes and whatnot. Um, yeah, there are a lot more like technical details here. Um, uh, but yeah, let's um, kind of look at the briefly at the performance before I stop talking. Um, they evaluated with um, a few uh, benchmarks. Uh, they did YCSB and a few uh, like dataset driven uh, benchmarks from from some like real and synthetic datasets. Um, and yeah, it, it seems like um, um, it seems like uh, you know their uh, Rolex system. Uh, beats their um, the naive, uh, you know, approach. Well, not there, but na the naive approach of using the learned index with the uh, B3 uh, for dynamic uh, workloads. You know, beats other uh, like learned index uh, systems and whatnot. Um, so yeah, um, Yeah, uh, performance under uh, various data distributions. Um, so that's, um, yeah, the non YCSB uh, workloads here. Um, again, it seems like in all of these workloads, their system bids, you know, the competition. Um, um, I think this figure eight is. Uh, various read-write scenarios, which uh, are YCSB, I believe, uh, based. Um, so, yeah, different number of inserts, number of um, yeah, read-write ratios, um, uh, and, and, and so on. Okay, I think I'll, um, you know, stop uh, here. Um, yeah.